A few years ago, I installed an electric heater in my garage that puts out 17,000 BTUs per hour at 5,000 watts. Certainly enough to keep my two-car garage and makeshift workspace toasty warm even on those cold main nights. There are, however, two issues I have with the unit. The first is the cost of main electricity, and unfortunately I can't control that. The second is the thermostat. I can't control that either. Typical to most of these units, the bimetal thermostat is functional, but not terribly granular or precise. I'd like to be able to set a comfort temperature when I'm out working on a video and have the heater hold that temperature until I'm done. Oh yeah, I also like it to work from my phone. Is that too much to ask? Let's give it a try. Through the course of this video, I will be working in and around mains power, which has the potential to harm or kill you. If you are uncomfortable working in these conditions or do not know what you're doing, seek out a professional to give you advice or do the work for you. I'm not a licensed electrician. If you attempt this modification, proceed with caution and do so at your own risk. To start out, let's take a look at the schematic for the H6517 electric heater. The unit utilizes 240 volt mains power. The bimetal thermostat switches one leg, 120 volts, to the heating element. When the thermostat closes, the circuit is made and the heating element is turned on. This particular unit has a separate fan controller included. When the heat element rises to a high enough set point, the fan controller completes the circuit to energize the fan and the unit starts blowing warm air. When the thermostat is satisfied, it breaks the circuit to the heating element and the fan continues to run until the fan controller reaches a low set point, and the fan will then turn off. The circuit works great, the only thing we need to do is change the thermostat. To do this, we need a new thermostat, something to power the thermostat, a transformer, and something to switch the 120 volts that the original thermostat was switching, a relay or, in my case, a contactor. Transformers allow us to increase or, in our case, decrease AC voltage. The primary side accepts mains voltage of 240 volts and steps it down to an output of 24 volts on the secondary side, which we'll use to power the new thermostat as well as activate the contactor. This is the transformer I'm using. On the primary side, we'll use the white common wire and the orange wire for 240 volts. The red and green wires will be our 24 volt secondary output. A contactor is basically a switch, but instead of throwing a lever or turning a knob, we'll use the 24 volts from our transformer connected to the coil lugs to do the work when the new thermostat tells it to. These lugs are where we connect the circuit we want switched. They're normally open or disconnected until the coil is activated. These terminals are for the coil. When 24 volts is applied across the coil, the contactor closes and the circuit is completed. First things first, remove the original thermostat from the circuit. Next, we'll wire in the transformer, primary side to the field wiring lugs. One of the 24 volt secondary lines will go directly to one side of the coil in the contactor. The other side of the 24 volts will connect directly to the R terminal of the new thermostat. To complete the wiring of the contactor, we'll connect one side to one leg of the field wiring where the original thermostat was connected. The other side will connect to the heating element at the terminal block, again, where the original thermostat was connected. The second connector set on the contactor will not be used. Now we just make the final two connections to the new thermostat. The C terminal will connect to the contactor coil that is also connected to the 24 volt transformer secondary. And finally, the W terminal will connect to the currently unconnected side of the contactor coil. Okay, that was a lot. But simply, when the thermostat calls for heat, it will energize the W terminal, sending 24 volts to the contactor coil, which will close the contactor and allow current to flow to the heating element. Before we get to it, here's what you'll need for this project. Some sheet metal screws and washers, a 240 volt to 24 volt transformer, a contactor that can handle 20 amps, a Wi-Fi enabled thermostat, a length of at least three conductor thermostat cable, appropriately sized crimp spade connectors, a nut driver or screwdriver, a crimp tool, not completely necessary, but a multimeter and or ammeter. It's also a good idea to have a non-contact voltage tester for safety. Okay, with our game plan laid out, let's give this a try. Let's check our tester. 
and then kill power to the heater. One screw is the only thing keeping us from our goal at this point, and that's easily remedied. Inside we see some familiar items, the field wiring terminal block and the bimetal thermostat. The heat element and the fan motor are in the compartment above, but we will need to access those. The thermostat connections that we will tap into are here and here. It's always a good idea to check your tester to verify that it can indeed detect voltage. That way you can be assured when no voltage is detected on the circuit you're working on that it's actually the case. I prepped the transformer by installing crimp spade connectors on the red and green secondary wires as well as white and orange primary wires. I made sure to give each connector a good solid pull to make sure a reliable crimp was achieved. Since the black and red wires on the primary side will not be used, I sealed off the ends with heat shrink tubing to prevent contact with anything inside the heater chassis. Next was a simple matter of mounting the transformer. I was able to use one of the existing holes in the chassis for one side while marking and drilling a second hole for the other. I did check the other side of that sheet metal plate to verify I had clearance and wouldn't be drilling into the heating element. I used a zip tie to bind up the two unused leads and to keep them out of the way. I then connected the white primary wire to the L2 field wiring lug and the orange wire to the L1 lug. Rinse and repeat as the contactor gets mounted next along with some great shots of the back of my head. I roughly measured a couple lengths of 14 gauge wire and prepped them with crimp spade connectors. With new wires in hand, I connected the contactor to the lugs that were previously occupied by the old bimetal thermostat. I gathered up the old thermostat leads and zip-tied them. There was no need to insulate the ends as they were no longer connected to any part of the circuit, but I wrapped them in some electrical tape just to be thorough. I knocked out a punch-out in the case to allow for the new thermostat control wire to enter the case. I didn't have any strain reliefs or cable guides lying around and because the unit vibrates while running I was concerned about the wire chafing. So I measured up the holes, jumped into Fusion, made a little cable guide, and sent it off to the 3D printer.
Eight minutes later, one custom cable guide. With the cable guide installed, the thermostat wire was fed through. The sheathing was stripped back and the individual wires were cut to length and crimp spade connectors were installed on each end. A zip tie was installed on either side of the cable guide to retain the thermostat wire, preventing it from moving in or out. Conveniently, there was a spare unused mounting lug and I used it to connect the red 24-volt secondary lead from the transformer and the red R lead from the thermostat together. The green 24-volt transformer secondary lead is next connected to one side of the coil on the contactor. The green C lead from the thermostat is connected to that same side of the coil, effectively connecting the two leads together. Finally, the white W lead from the thermostat is connected to the other side of the contactor coil. And with that, the work inside the heater is complete. Mounting this thermostat was not my crowning achievement. I didn't have access to easily run the cable in the wall, and since this is the garage, having the cable exposed doesn't really bother me. But in order to mount the thermostat flat and level, I needed to cut a little channel in the drywall for the conductors to recess into. I considered designing and printing some sort of offset riser, but decided against it as the thermostat would look strange sitting so proud off the wall. I also ran into my old nemesis, the video monitor running out of battery and stopping the recording at critical moments unbeknownst to me issue, which I previously solved in this video linked here. Unfortunately, this was what we call a remote shoot and the monitor was running on battery, so I didn't get the wire connection money shot. But here's the final product. The R, C, and W thermostat connections are completed according to our schematic. With the new thermostat connected and seated, power is applied, and the initial setup is started. Everything is very straightforward, setting time and date, as well as connecting the thermostat to the Wi-Fi network. All my other thermostats are connected through Honeywell Home, so it was a simple matter to add this one to the rest. Please note, I'm not sponsored by or affiliated with Honeywell. I just happen to like and use their products. The system asks you to set a random set point to verify you are in control of the unit, after which the new thermostat is added to the system. And now, the primary reason for all this pain and effort. That satisfying of the contactor says, heat control is mine. Turns out that was not too much to ask after all. I now have complete control over the temperature of my workspace and I could do so directly from my phone, even if I'm relaxing on the warm shores of Fiji. Speaking of things that are exotic, I've been brainstorming ways of subsidizing the high cost of electricity when running electric heaters here in Maine. I'm thinking a Maine-styled OnlyFans. What do you think? Bow, chicka, bow, bow. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a comment and strike a like. The interaction helps my videos and it gives me a chance to interact with you all and I greatly appreciate that. Until next time, I'm Maine Jason. Get out there and give it a try.